Today's hill is a hill I've done many times and it's a little under an hour's drive from home. As such, it's a hill that I head to if time's short or if the weather's not great in the hill. I always use this as my default hill. But as with all local hills and hills we've been up many times, it feels different every time you go up it, what with the weather conditions. But another way to make it a bit different is to head up it a different way. And today I was going up a way I'd never been up before. I'm in the hills above Loch Ern, and I've just passed Ard Vorlich House and I'm in the forest which sits above that and the, the route that usually goes to Ben Vorlich and I'm hopefully going to head there today but via a slightly different route I've uh, headed off the path, I'm heading right and I'm going to head up a wee hill called Ben Ur initially but I thought I'd come through here and the last time I came down here, it was dark, I'd gone up for a sunset in Ben Vorlick and I can remember coming through these woods and I'm not a very spiritual person but I had a distinct feeling I was being watched it might have just been the, the, the growing gloom and the darkness taking me but uh, it's just one of these places and there's a lot of history I don't know whether that was in the back of my mind most people see the wee uh, ceremonial headstone at the, the bottom of the drive for our Borlick House, which states there was a clan of McDonald's had come over from Glencoe to attack the Ardvorlich House, which was inherited by the Stuarts at the time, and they, they got well and soundly beat, and apparently there were seven of the, uh, the soldiers buried at the point where the headstone sits. I'm pretty sure there's, there's a lot of truth in that, because when the road was built, the road that goes up the south side of Loch Ern, they found seven skeletons near that spot. So there's probably a bit of truth, there's a lot of blood and gore back in the day. And that led me to look into a wee bit more history around about Ardvorlich House. Um, the person that really sort of stands out was a guy called the Mad Major of Ardvorlich. I think it was James Begg Stewart. And there's lots of stories about him, but the one that cap captured my imagination was one of his birth and his mother. His mother, who was the lady of the house, had been in the house by herself. And her brother, who was a gamekeeper over in the, uh, the, the Glen Artney in the, the following Glen, which neighbours the McGregor territory, had been up to some, uh, well, hadn't been up to any mischief, but he'd annoyed the McGregors who had beheaded them. And they'd come to Ardvorlich House when the lady of the house was in by herself. I mean, she was away getting food for the hosts. They left the head of her brother on the table, and she apparently fled to these woods where she gave birth to mad Major Ardvorlich. Now, I'm not sure if there's any truth in that either, but it's a good story. It just shows you how bloody the history was <laughs> back in those days. I'm kind of feeling glad that I'm in the uh, 21st century now, heading up these these uh, these woods. I wouldn't fancy meeting the Mad Major or, or any of the McGregors, Rob Roy, or all these people when I was out hiking. I don't know if uh, I'd have any of my ears left or I'd get my head chopped off. But anyway, enough of the history. I'm just about to start the steep pool at Ben Hour now. There's no path here, which is quite nice actually. And I'm going to head over Ben Hour and see how windy it is in the top before deciding on whether I'm going to go to Ben Vorlock or not. So. Let's talk him, let's get walking. Try to get a wee bit of shelter behind this uh, behind this big boulder, medium sized boulder there. I'm uh, halfway up Ben Hour and as expected there's no path which is fine, the ground's starting to turn frozen now which is making progress a little easier because it's a bit boggy down there. A lot of bracken, it's fine at this time of the year because it's uh, it's all kind of died back but I think in the summer there's going to be a bit of a bracken or fern bash to get up here. So anyway, lovely views behind me, you can see Loch Hearn stretching down and, and as always with these hills that uh, I haven't actually ventured up, although I've been up Ben Vorlich tens of times, it's always nice to see it from a different perspective and if I swing round you'll see it over there and you can also get a lovely view of Stuka Croy which is that shapely one just to the right of uh, Ben Vorlich. I'll not be heading there today but it's absolutely lovely I think. If you remember I came here in the summer and went up Stuka Croy and I was going to be coming back over Ben Hour to catch the sunset but I ran out of time. So today I've chosen to go up Ben Hour first. So hopefully I get up there 
and we'll see how windy it is because it is forecast to be rather gusty in the top. I think it was 50, 60 mile an hour gusts. So we'll see if we get there or not. But so far, so good. Let's go. The higher I got on Ben Hour, the windier it became and the forecast winds were certainly hitting me and making walking a little bit difficult. So I eventually found a shelter spot and having looked at the map I knew this would be the last spot where I'd get some shelter from the wind so I stopped and put on my hard shell, got my goggles on and decided to have a bite to eat here because I knew that between here and the summit of Ben Hour I was going to get blown about quite a bit. After enjoying lunch with the view down Loch Air, I headed onwards. And I was right, it was blown a hoolie as I headed up towards the summit of Ben Hour, and I battled to keep myself upright. However, I soon found myself taking the last few footsteps towards the summit, and although I was still upright, my camera and tripod weren't doing quite so well. So it's really, really windy, I've just dropped off the summit just behind me there. And it's just amazing how much shelter you get just over the top. It's still a bit breezy. But what a viewpoint. The views over to Ben Vorl, we can stuck a croin. Absolutely lovely. A completely different viewpoint to what we're used to. You can see down Glen Ogle that way. And over down to Loch Foyle and Balquidder and the Braes of Balquidder. Rob Roy country over to the west. So I'm going to drop down towards stuck a croin or the, the Bulloch at the top of... Uh, or at the base of the northwest ridge of... Ben Vorlick and I'm going to make a decision there on whether I'm going to head up Ben Vorlick or not. I've got about three hours of uh, daylight left. I've got my head torches so I think I'll be okay. And the other reason I came up Ben Hour first is I knew, I know that side of the hill, I don't know this side of the hill, so if I did get caught out and I was coming down in the dark, at least over there I know the, the hill and there's a nice path that I can follow. If I was coming down this way it's pathless, I've never been on the hill before. So I didn't fancy navigating in the dark. Hopefully I'll not have to do that, but let's crack on and see if we can get a Ben Vorley. Fantastic! To be honest, I wasn't quite sure if I was going to make it up to the summit of Ben Vorlich. It was that windy here on Ben Hour. I was pretty sure the extra height of Ben Vorlich would increase the winds even more and I wouldn't have a chance of standing up or getting up there, but I headed on to see what the conditions would be like. I'm at the Bielach now, and this is a bit more familiar to those who come up and go over Ben Vorlick and then over to Stuka Croin because it's round about here you head back down. Uh, you come off Stuka Croin and skirt back around uh, Ben Vorlick. So I'm actually in the shelter of the mountain, Ben Vorlick. It's actually sheltering me from that gale force wind. So I'm going to give this northwest ridge a try. I'm going to head up it and uh, you, you eventually meet the path which heads on to Stuka Croin, but I'll be taking a left there. Whether at that point I'll be able to get up onto the summit is another matter because it has been really blowy. I'll just have to measure the conditions when I get up there. But I'm going to go up and have a look. I've got my ice axe and crampons. There's a sprinkling of snow at the top. And see how I get on. I'd never been up this side of the hill before and, I, and I'd chosen it today, hoping that it would give me some shelter from those south southeasterly gales. And it certainly did that. It was a fine way up the mountain. And there was a slight path stroke animal track up but it was just lovely especially going up a side of the mountain i'd never been up before it just gives it a new feel a bit of freshness and i was soon up into the frost and the snow and yeah it was just lovely no wind at all beautiful conditions well um uh, as you can probably tell by the lack of wind noise i'm being really lucky here the summit is just behind me there and i can still see that the clouds are moving super quick across the sky so i know it's going to be it's going to be blown a hoolie there but I did expect by the time I got onto the ridge here, this is me on the final ridge to the summit, that the wind would be coming up from the south, but it's more of a southeasterly and the summit is still protecting me, so this is just perfect. It's worked out absolutely beautifully. I've managed to stay out of the wind apart from when I was over on Ben Hour. And I've managed to escape the, uh, or escape, or not come across, shall I say, any marauding <laughs> McGregors from the breeze of Balquidder. Been quite safe, not met another soul to be honest with you. So anyway, about another 100 metres to go, and I'll be at the top. I don't know if I'll do a piece to camera at the top, because as I said, I think it's going to be a bit windy. But let's see. Right, let's crack on and get to the summit of Ben Vorley.
Well, up I went, and it wasn't until really the last, I don't know, 50 to 100 metres that the wind started to catch me. They rooted them brilliantly in keeping me out of the wind so far, but now I was really battling against that southeasterly gale. It's somewhat very warm here. And it's a wee bit breezy, but not nearly as bad as I thought or was forecast. So sometimes it just pays to get out and test out. It's absolutely glorious. The, the clouds starting to fill in a wee bit now. It's blown over the summit. I've got about an hour to get down before sunrise, sunrise, sunset even. And I'll go back down the normal way, as you can see down here and down the shoulder. I've got my micro spikes on, which I very rarely use in the mountain because they're useless in snow. But today there's just a there's a thick frost and the bits of snow that I've gone across are, are well compacted and frozen. So I've got them on, they're helping a wee bit and they'll help on the descent. So yeah, better than expected. Gonna stay up, take some photographs, and then get back down the road. <laughs> <laughs> 